Bobby, let's talk a wee bit about today first. Um, still a lot to play for going into the day, 3.47 to 7.23 more needed to avoid the follow-on. Kent certainly didn't make it easy. No, they didn't. Um, obviously, like you say, we had to come back and avoid the follow-on. Um, but kind of once we did that, the game was almost dead and buried. We could have probably shaken hands there and then, I think, and, and gone home. But um, great effort to get past it from us. Um, but obviously, it's a, it's a long four days. With, we're getting a good draw out of it. Um, but, you know, it puts us in a good good stage in the in the ladder going into the T20s. And what about Lewis McManus? Obviously, slightly handicapped by that, that finger injury, but dug really deep and played a, an innings of huge character out there, 58 not out. Yeah, he did. He played exceptionally well. Um, obviously struggling a bit with his finger, but I think you know, I think he'll be fine uh, moving forward to, to the T20s. But yeah, he played, he played really well. And as I said, the most important thing for us in terms of the game was getting past the follow-on, almost killed the game, and, and we, we did that, so we were pleased with that. Uh, I'm quite su surprised that you managed to get down to have a chat with us without uh, getting elbowed out of the way by Ben Sanderson wanting to talk about his batting, and Ben Curran wanting to talk about his bowling. Yeah, <laughs> they're both of them are talking to each other I think up there, the rest of the lads have uh, given up, but yeah Sando batted, batted nicely and as you say we'll hear about that for a little while and Ben Curran's wicket, <laughs> his beans were going when he got that wicket that's for sure and he, I think he could be talking about that for the rest of the year. I think there's every chance. Let's talk a bit about the blast obviously coming up uh, starting for Northamptonshire on, on Thursday at Edgbaston. Didn't go entirely according to plan last year, the T20 not least because you managed unfortunately to get yourself injured fairly early on in the campaign. How confident are you that this year it could be better? Yeah, well, we've, we've done a lot of work in the, on the winter um, on our white ball stuff. So, you know, looking forward to seeing where people have kind of upskilled and, and where we can add that to our game. And, and obviously two new overseas players we've not had before and, and they bring a different dynamic and, and both, you know, current exciting players. So looking forward to that. We've got Matt Kelly staying on for the first two games before Jimmy Neesham gets here. Um, so it's good that he's been around the group, lads know him, obviously a great guy. Um, so yeah, looking forward to get going. We've had a, we've had a long, you know, tough six, six games. Um, and we, you know, we've done ourselves proud in the way we've gone about things, but it's probably now it's time to have a bit more fun, um, a bit more excitement, people in, and like I say, hopefully we can have some fun winning some games of cricket. You mentioned Chris Lynn there, uh, and he was, he's been saying in his various media interviews so far that he wants to be a leader he wants to be part of the leadership group and as uh, Steelbacks captain that must be good uh, good news to hear to have someone like that wanting to take a, such a prominent role Yeah we've already been in, in most of the chats over the last week um, but yeah from my point of view you can never have enough leaders um, it's always good to hear different voices um, and before I make my decisions so yeah it's great to have him and like I said Jimmy Neesham they, they both bring a bit of um, like I say, the leadership and, and a bit of experience. They've got loads of experience, loads of games of cricket, and I think that's that's what we need in the dressing room to help help some of the younger guys kind of guide them through it. You mentioned Jimmy Neesham there. Uh, as you say, unfortunately not around for the first couple of days because of uh, IPL commitments. A uh, bit of a blow, but so you, you're saying Matt Kelly is going to be staying on for a couple of matches? Yeah, it is a bit of a blow, but obviously it was kind of always in the pipeline with the IPL being as long as it is. Um, and obviously they've gone, they've gone pretty well and managed to scrape through. But I think there'll be um, yeah, two games. And like I said, we know plenty about Matt. Um, he can bat as well. We, you know, it's, it's not quite like for like, but he still gives us, you know, he gives us four overs and he can, he can hit a long ball, maybe a fraction lower than what Jimmy would bat. But it's not, there's not too much discrepancy in, in the two. And first up, the Bears at Edgbaston, great place to start. Great place, great memories. Um, but obviously they are a very strong side, they've recruited well um, and, and there will be, you know, there'll be a force. But first up, hopefully we can hit, hit the ground running and, and hit them hard early on and get that, get that first win. And then Friday night against Durham, it would be just great to be back at Wantage Road, Friday night, T20, full house on Wood Hope. And it's going to be great atmosphere. Yeah, very excited for Friday. Um, you know, it's a great ground, especially when it is a sellout and, and it's rocking. Um, so hopefully we can put on some performances, put on some wins and keep the crowd coming back because you know, I've been telling the overseas lads that are used to playing in, in massive grounds that you know, this one's it's a bit closer but it's, it's certainly you know, less more entertaining. So yeah, looking forward to it.